All right. All right, so you guys did linear regression, like in Algebra 1, you did linear regression, where you use the graphing calculator, you made a scatter plot, you find the line of best fit. So we're going to do that. We are going to check in the calculator today, but we're going to learn how to do that by hand. And it's going to be really similar to what we did with correlation coefficients as far as the calculation process goes um, from last week. So uh, first we're going to talk about what is a regression line. A regression line, also called line of best fit, is the line for which the sum of the squares of the residuals is at a minimum, which is just a lot of fancy language there. A residual is um, the difference in height between a point on your, for your data, a point on your scatter plot, and then um, either going above it or below it down to our line of best fit. We want to minimize the distance that this line is from our point. So the smaller the res residuals are, the better your line of best fit is. Um, so if you were getting really fancy with this, you would calculate each residual, you would square the residuals, and we want that value to be as small as possible and that's the best line of best fit. Okay, um, so first thing we're going to do is just we're going to go back to Algebra 1, Y equals MX plus B stuff here. So I have four graphs where you have the regression line and you have a scatter plot, and we want to match the equation at the bottom to the graph that's listed. And let's put some letters on those bottom ones there. We'll call them uh, number 1, 2, 3, 4, actually. I already have letters at the top. 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, notice instead of y equals mx plus b, they're using a y hat. They've got that little carrot on the top of it again. Y hat just means it's a sample, again, that we're looking at here versus a population. Okay, so um, let's look at graph A. So graph A, that line isn't extended all the way through. You can always extend it if you want, best of your ability, something like that. Okay, to cover the whole graph. When you do it in your calculator, it will cover the whole graph. And what we want to focus on is the y-intercept, where it's crossing the y-axis, and then whether the slope, for the most part, is positive or negative. Um, so from that picture, can you tell me which of the equations at the bottom is the matching line of regression? Number four. The difference between four and one, although they're both negative, they're both negative slopes, so that's good, but number four has a y-intercept around 27, Number one has a y-intercept around 22, so that's a little too low for what we're looking at in that first picture. Now, letter B, if you extend that line to the y-intercept, to the y-axis, um, you can see that's more of a 21, 22 where we're crossing there. So that would be number one. Okay, so what do you think about letter C? Two. Let's take our line. Let's bring it back. Two looks pretty good. I'll take it. And then D is going to be a little bit lower, 3. Okay, so regression line going up, slope is positive. Regression line going down, line is negative, slope is negative. And then that y-intercept to figure out your B value. Questions there? Okay. How we calculate a slope and a y-intercept for our regression line is as follows. And again, we're going to use y hat where y hat is for a sample, it's a prediction, okay? Um, we have a formula for m, we have a formula for b. This formula for m, if you notice, there's a lot of similar um, overlapping values there from what we saw with our correlation coefficient. So we're going to have that big table of values again. We're going to sum up the x's, sum up the y's, sum up the xy's, sum up the x squareds, and just plug them in. To get b, we're really just going to use this formula. Um, it's y bar minus m times x bar. y bar and x bar are just the averages of your y's and the averages of your x's, which is what this stuff to the right is saying. To get the average of my y's, I add up all my y's and divide by n. To get the average of my x's, I add up all my x's divide by n, um, but I think the one with the bars is a little prettier to look at. Okay, So in order to do this, we're going to do one problem by hand. Um, we're going to set up a table. So the table's on the next slide for you. In this one, we are comparing hours of studying is our x, and test scores is our y. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that x and y in. When you guys do one of these problems on the final exam, it's going to be something like this. 
as well as a correlation coefficient. So you won't really be like starting from scratch with the table when you do the line of best fit because you'll have done all of this work for the R value already. You'll just be pulling that so it won't be, you know, starting from scratch, which is nice. Okay, so 40, 51, 64, 69, 73, 75, 93, 90, and 95. Okay, just getting my data in those first two columns. Okay, this is actually one less column than what we did before. We don't need the y squared. So if we need x times y, we need all the x squared. Let's go next. X times Y, let's see, that would give me a 0, a 102, 2.56, 3.45, 3.65, 3.75, 558, 630, 760. Okay. And then we need all of our x squared. So 0, 4, 16, 25, 25, 25, 36, 49, 64. Okay. Once you have your columns filled out, we're going to find the sum of each of them. All right, sum of my x's. Forty two. Sum of my y's. Six fifty. That sounds good. Get the xy's yet? Three three nine one, and then sum of my x squareds. Two forty four. Okay. All right. Um, you also need the couple little pieces that I put to the right there. You need n. N is how many data points we have. How many data points do we have here? Nine. You need x bar, which is the sum of all of your x's divided by n, the average of our x's. Well, the sum of the x's we already have, it's 42 over 9. Um, now, that's an exact answer, so I'll be using that in the formula. But if you want an approximation, like if you're doing this in Math Excel, you can divide it. It's 4.6 repeating. So you could say like 4.667 if you wanted to give three decimal places on that. Okay, actually, I'll write that one instead. Okay, and then y bar, sum of my y's. Divided by n, some of our y's was 650 over 9. Again, that's the exact answer. 650 over 9 is approximately 72.222. All right, questions on any of that? Okay, on the next slide then, I went ahead and put the formula for m and the formula for b. We don't need that one on the right, the far right, because we're just going to use the one with the y bar and x bar. We already got those. Okay, so you might have to flip back and forth here a little bit. I apologize. All right, so I'm starting with n, which is 9 in the numerator. Then the sum of x times y, which was 3,391. Minus the sum of my x's was 42. And the sum of our y's was 650. Denominator, n again, 9. Okay, and then there is a distinct difference between the other two things at the bottom. The first sum of x squared does not have a parentheses, which means you square all the x's and then sum them all up. So that first number I'm going to put in is the very last column that we had. All of the x squared summed up, which was 244. The second one, we have a parentheses, 
So in that parentheses, we're putting the sum of the x's, and then the parentheses is squared. The sum of the x's was 42. Okay? So numerator and denominator separately here. 3 or 9 times 3, 3, 9, 1, minus 42 times 650 gives me 3,219 on top. On the bottom, I get 432. Again, that's an exact answer. And then you can divide them, and you get 7.451 is my approximate value for M. Okay. To get B then, my Y bar and my X bar, my Y bar was 650 over 9, is the exact value. Um, my M, again, I'm going to use the exact value, 3,219 over 432, what we just found. And then my X bar was 42 over 9. So again, we really don't have to round until that very last piece there. Um, 37.449. So then our final equation is Y hat equals my slope. 7.451x plus my y-intercept, 37.449. And you could always put exact fractions in there if you needed to, but most of the time we're going to round these numbers. And that's what the calculator is going to do too. It's going to give us those decimals. Okay, so um, then you can use this to interpret something. Like if I said, um, what is the, actually I think I have it on the next page. Um, what's the score for studying nine hours? What would you do? Yeah, you would just let x equal nine. And then you would simplify that with your calculator. Four, five, one times nine plus 37.449, and I get, that student would get 104.5%, according to this model, okay? Um, what does the 37.449 represent in real life here? So it's a y-intercept, but in real life, what does it mean in the context of this problem? Yep. That's the lowest possible score. So that, that shows that it means getting zero hours. So you get a 40 yeah, so our samples show that zero, you get a 40%, but according to our model, which again is based on the data, um, this would be if you study zero hours, you would get about a 37, which we know could be higher and lower than that. That's just an approximation. Okay, um, and then you could also work backwards with this too. You could say like if you want to get a 90% on the test, what, how many hours do you have to study? So you could put 90 in for that y hat, and you could solve for x then too. So you can use it both ways. Okay, last thing. Let's check this with our calculator, and let's get the scatter plot picture in our calculator too, because I think you're going to have to do that in Math Excel. All right, so hit Stat, Edit, and I want you to put this data in there that we've got. Okay. In L1 and L2... Let's compare. Because that is the right answer. We did we checked it last period. Um six fifty over nine. Minus Okay. Oh, you've got 452 typed in here, not 432. Um, okay. All right. That's fine. All right, do we have our data in there? All right, so we're going to hit stat. 
Go over to Calc. Number four. Okay, and before you do anything else, go down to where it says store regression equation. It's a store regression equation. We are going to tell the calculator to put this equation in Y1 because then it's going to make the scatter plot and the line of best fit all for us at once. To get that, you're going to hit VARS. It's right below your arrows. Go over to Y VARS, function Y1. Okay, so VARS, Y VARS, function Y1. And you can really choose any Y. It doesn't matter as long as it's put in there somewhere. Okay, so now when you hit calculate, We'll see a few things. So you can check our slope, 7.451. You can check our y-intercept, 37.449. That's all good. You even have that r value. Does everybody have the r value still? Okay, so that's our correlation coefficient. Um, it's pretty close to 1, so we could say strong positive correlation with the data, which means studying is more than likely affecting your grade, which is good to know. Um, and then if you go into y equals... You will see that the equation with every decimal point is typed in there. Please turn your plot on. Go up to plot, hit enter, go back down. You guys, that guy's alpha trace will also get you that Y1 option if you don't want to go through the bars menu. Okay, um, last but not least, every time you get these graphs, you have to hit zoom, and then you have to choose zoom stat, option number nine, and that will zoom in on your particular set of data. So now you can see our line and our scatter plot. That is a pretty good line, okay? So I'm pretty sure my equation is correct, right? But if my line was like, way off of my data, I would have a little bit of an issue, okay? But every time, zoom nine to get that picture. What's wrong? Oh, okay. So if you have weird, like, jagged lines, um, hit second y equals, and then choose plot one, and then just highlight the scatter plot instead of the line graph under the type there. Uh-huh. Zoom nine. Okay. Yes. So I have this in my way. Yep, turn your plot on. Oh, oh that would be why. Enter. And now it's okay. Well, I had zoomed on the other oh, side. Yeah, okay. But uh, yep. okay. yeah, he didn't know to zoom in on that one because he didn't have a plot over there. Yeah. Got it. Okay. okay. Everybody able to get this picture that was up there a second ago? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so any questions getting line of best fit by hand, line of best fit in the calculator, evaluating with the line of best fit, estimating? That's it. That's full lesson. We're done. Okay, so uh, rest of the period is yours. You guys have two math Excels currently. 9 1 is due tomorrow night, Tuesday. 9 2 is due Wednesday night. Those are your last two math Excels. 10 1 and 10 2 that we're going to do the next couple days have just little worksheets that go along with them. Um, so as soon as you get these two done, math Excels are all set. All right. And then tomorrow I'm going to get you the hard copy of your exam review. Remember we talked about the clue game? 
That is bonus, three bonus points on your final exam. That is live and running. If you guys want to check that out in Polaris, you guys have until the end of the day next Monday to solve the mystery. So one week if you want. All right? Oh, gosh, Olivia, that's a great question.